Hey, it's Mark here. And here's a little preview on what we're gonna to create today in this video. I'm gonna show you how to apply artwork to the box set and how to insert a background image behind the box set and also how to create this little nifty, elegant, wavy effect going across the spines of the books here as well. And a lot of other little tips and tricks along the way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. I'll go ahead and close this preview image out and let's go over to our finder window. Now what I've done here is I've already downloaded a, a the box set bundle. And so what I'll need to do is just extract this bundle that I've downloaded. So I'll just double click on that. And then I'll just double click inside of the folder. And you can see I just have a number of different box set mockups and templates to choose from. We are going to use a, a five book box set mockup. Cause you can see the box sets, the they go all the way up to 25 books. If you did have, or if you do have a set with at least 25 books, uh, you're gonna have this box set available for you. Uh, there, I believe it or not, we've had requests for this many books in a box set. It's just, I know it seems like a lot, but they're they're actually out there and they are very, very real, uh, believe it or not. But for this tutorial, let's open up a five book box set mockup. And here we go right here. Here's the preview of the box set. And and here is the actual Photoshop file. And you know it's the Photoshop file because it has the extension PSD after the file. Uh, there are several ways I can open up this in Photoshop. I can just double click on it. Uh, in my case, I have a couple versions of Photoshop installed. So what I'm gonna do is just right click on my mouse and choose open with, and then select uh, the version of Photoshop that I have installed. And that'll just open it up right there. So. We've got it open into Photoshop. Now let's look over on the layers palette. We've got a few layers here that we can edit and modify to apply our artwork. And then over here on the thumbnail, if you see a little icon on the lower right of the thumbnail, that's just giving you an indication that this is a smart object, which means we can edit the contents of this layer, which is pretty cool. And all we have to do is to access that layer and to open it up, we just have to double click on it and then it opens it up into its own separate document. And then from here, what we can do is we can come up here to file and open a, a piece of artwork or a cover if we want to. In my case, I already have the finder window open here. So I'm going to locate the box cover artwork that we're gonna use. Here we go. And there's a couple ways I can open up this artwork into Photoshop. One way would be to just right click and choose open width and it'll open it up into Photoshop this way by selecting the application here. Or I can also move this finder window just over to the corner a little bit. I can click and hold down the mouse and drag that file over Photoshop in the background here and then just release the mouse and then it will apply and fill the basic template with our artwork. So that's pretty cool. And then to just confirm this movement and this transformation, I can click on the little check button here at the very top of the of the options bar but i can also press the return key on the keyboard and that'll also confirm it so after i've done this all i can do is just simply close this document and when i close it it's going to ask me if i want to save it but as soon as i save it it's going to update my box cover with the artwork so let's go ahead and continue and add the artwork for the other panels on this box set. So for the next one here, uh, we, we can see the, the cover of the first book here seeping through the uh, little thumb slot. And so that should be book one cover, which is right here on the layers palette. And then so what I'll do, the same thing I did for the box cover artwork, I'll just double click on this thumbnail for book one cover and that'll open up the basic template in its own separate document. And then let's go over to the finder window here and find the book cover that we're going to use. It's right here. And I'll do this a different way. I'm gonna show you another way that you can apply artwork uh, to the smart object documents inside Photoshop. You can just right click here and choose open with, and then I'll choose the version that I'm working with right now. And then the artwork will be opened up into a document here. And I can see this is the smart object document and this is the artwork document. So in order to get the artwork from here over to 
the smart object document, here's what I can do. Really, the easiest way to do this is just to go up here to select, select all, and then over here to edit and copy, or if you have several layers on this artwork document, then I would select edit, copy merged. It's grayed out right now because I only have one layer, which is just the background. Uh, so I'm gonna select copy. And then I really don't need this open anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and just close that. I'm gonna come up here to edit and down here to paste. There's also a shortcut for this. You can use Command V or you can use uh, Control V on the PC and that will do the same thing. I'm gonna select paste from the edit menu and then I'm going to close this document now, click on save, and now it's applied to the front cover of book number one. So let's go ahead and move over to the spines of these books. Now this is where it really gets a lot of fun here. Um, so let's go over to the layers palette and let's locate the spine layer. So here it is right here. And I can see that this is a smart object layer as well because it has a little icon. I'm gonna double click on that layer. So we've opened this up and the really cool thing is with these templates is that you can actually apply uh, the spine artwork for your books all on the same document. So let's go over to the finder window again here and this uh, here are the spines that I'm going to use the the spine artwork for this box set and then so I'm just going to click and drag that right into Photoshop release the mouse and you can see that I've I've got kind of a jet airplane going over right now. <laughs> I don't know if that's coming into the microphone, but I've applied the artwork over the spines. And then what I'm gonna do is just click on the little check mark up here, or I can press return on the keyboard. Uh, it, it's up to you. Now let's apply a special effect over all the spines of this box set here. Now this is something that I've seen. I've seen a lot of covers on Amazon that and, and the covers have this effect. So I thought I would go ahead and share it with you on how this works. The, the first thing you wanna do, you just wanna have some type of graphic that you can apply over all, across all the spines of your books. And so I went on Google and I just searched for wavy, you know, wavy vector effect. And this is what I came up here with right here. So I'm just going to apply and drag this wave effect here, wave background and release the mouse. And now it's inside the document here. And then so what I'll need to do from here is just res resize this. So I'll hold down the shift key when I do this. I'll hold down the shift key and then I'll click on the corners, one of the transformation handles on the corners, uh, on the corner of this layer here. And this way, when I hold down the shift key, that just makes sure that the image is maintaining its proportions. Now, if I don't hold down the shift key, Look what happens. It's just, it's, it's allowing me to transform at will. I mean, any type of <laughs> transformation that I want to apply to this actual layer, I can do that. But that's not what I want. I want to maintain the aspect ratio and the proportions of that layer. So I'll just go ahead and undo that. And I'll hold down the shift key. Now, if you would like to do another little tip here, if you would like to transform from the center in and, and the center out, you can hold down another key while you hold down the shift key. And that's the option key on the Mac and that's the alt key on the PC. And I'll show you what I mean here. If I just hold down the shift key and then I resize, you can see it'll just resize to the corner of the opposite, the opposite corner of where I'm grabbing here on the transformation handle. However, if I hold down the shift key and the option key together, then it will resize to the center of the actual layer. And I actually like to work with this a lot more often and it's just, it's just, easier, it's just easier for me. But um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hold down those keys and I'm going to size up this background wave graphic so it covers the entire document just like this. And when I have it, let's see, I'll just press the return key on the keyboard to confirm that transformation. And then here is the trick, guys, because at the moment we've covered up the background or we've covered up our artwork. And so we don't want that. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to blend this layer here in with the artwork layer below it. So by having the graphic layer activated, come up here to the layer blending modes menu 
and then come down here and select divide. And what this is going to do is going to take your, it's going to take a graphic over, that's over a white background, such as the wave effect, and it's gonna allow you to just blend it in with the textures that you have on your cover. And you can see the textures are nicely coming through here. It almost looks kind of like a silky little wavy elegant effect. And I thought it looked really cool, so I wanted to include it on the video. But uh, that looks really nice. And so what I can do is just click, use the move tool over here and just move this and position it exactly where I want. I can move this from side to side if I want to uh, by you know adjusting it. I can move it up here, which is going to appear a little bit brighter because it's using the lighter pixels from the background. But right here, I'm just going to position it. That looks really nice. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. So from here, all I have to do is just close this document. And then when I do that, it's gonna ask me if I wanna save it, of course. So let's go ahead and save. And then now that's applied to the spines on the box set. Look at that. Let me grab the magnifying tool here. And I'm gonna zoom into the edge of this box set. And you can see this is purple. This is the default color that the box set is when you open up the box set for the very first time. But what I wanna do is I wanna match this edge here with the color, with the same shading and color of the artwork that I have on the box set. So this is really easy to do. And to zoom out after you have the magnifying glass, just hold down the option key on the keyboard. If you're on the PC, that's the alt key. And you'll see it change from a positive to a negative, and that'll allow you to zoom out. You can also hold down the space bar on the keyboard, and that'll give you this little hand tool. You see that? So you hold down the space bar, and now you can move and navigate around while you're working on the mock-up. Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out here, and we want to edit and modify the color of this edge. But before I do that, I wanna sample a color from the cover of this book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the eyedropper tool right here on the toolbar, and then I'm going to select a shade or, or a color that's very close to the edge of the book or the edge of the box opening here. I'm going to click the mouse with the eyedropper tool over the area that I would like to sample the color from. And then what I'm gonna do after this is, let me try that one more time. Then what I'm going to do is over here on the layers palette, there is a box color layer. I'm going to double click on the layer thumbnail on this layer and it's going to open it up and it says right here, fill with color, which is what we need to do. And let's come up here to edit down here to fill. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna fill in this document here that I've just opened, the box color document. I wanna fill that with the color that I sampled from the cover of the artwork just a moment ago. And so when I clicked and sampled that color, it applied and set that color as the foreground. So all I have to do is make sure that where it says contents, making sure that this is set or selected on foreground color, and then click OK. So it's almost like a very, it's almost like a dark gray, but it does have a little bit of green in it, and you can see the difference, very, very subtle difference there. At this point, all I have to do is just close this document. It's gonna ask me to save. I'll click on save. And then now we've modified and changed the edge. So the edge and the opening there of the box set is matching with the color and shading of the artwork on the box set. Okay, and so there's one more tip here that I wanna show you, and that's how to insert and place a background behind your box set. All right, now this might not apply to all scenarios. Um, if you, maybe if you're, if you're placing a box set for a promotion on Amazon or somewhere like that, uh, you probably don't want a background, but maybe you're creating a promo or something like that, or you're doing a printout, and maybe you're doing some fancy web design work where you do want a, ba a background behind the, the box set, then this is where that would apply. But let's go over, I'm gonna select my finder window again, and I have a little, kind of a little grungy, little gothic background here that I'm going to use. And But before I insert and drag this into Photoshop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the background layer or the background is selected on the layers palette. 
what this is going to do is that when I insert or drag any artwork or paste any artwork into the document, it's going to paste it above the background layer. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click on this table background, click and drag that over behind uh, into Photoshop. Cool. And you can see that it's uh, it's been moved over successfully and I will go ahead and just uh, click on the little check box here at the very top to confirm that and we can see the background behind there and that just looks awesome. So those are some tips and tricks on getting the really getting the most out of the box set mockups and templates. I think they're really a great way. They really make your your book series pop and it also creates a sense of more value in your prospects eyes which in you know in the end can 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 increase sales and conversions and it, it just really really makes them look gorgeous and uh, uh, creates more of like a, a feeling of more tangibility of, of a real real book and that was really the whole goal behind everything when I created these box sets so hope you enjoyed the video if you would like some more tips uh, and tricks let me know but uh, you guys make it a great day and uh, we'll see you on the next one take care Hey, it's Mark here and welcome to the demo video for Cover Action Pro 3.0. I'm going to show you how things have been totally simplified now when it comes to creating professional presentation graphics for your books and products. I'm going to give you a quick tour of Cover Action Pro. I'm going to walk you through the different mockups and templates and then I'll show you how to create your own 3D product shot in just under a minute. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'll go over to the browser. And I've already got Cover Action Pro downloaded and installed. Uh, you can see the mockups are divided up into separate folders. You can just easily just come through here and browse around. You can sort by the size of the mockups and the covers. Uh, the dimensions are divided up in their own separate folders for you just to make things convenient. Uh, here's some magazines, media players, notebooks, uh, paperback books. And I have the products and courses here. 
And there's just over over 500 mockups that are included with Cover Action Pro 3.0. So what we're going to do here in this video, I'm going to show you how in just under a minute or just in just seconds, how you can apply a book cover and create a 3D product shot. So let's go into the templates. And these are the pre-made templates that are included with Cover Action Pro. Uh, you can totally customize these. Let's go ahead and pick one out here for this video here. Um, how about this one right here, public speaking. So I'll go ahead and right click on that and open that up into Photoshop. Okay, so this is a six by nine book cover. So what I'll do is I'll return back to the browser and I'll just go over here where the paperback books is. I'll go ahead and expand that. And you can see the paperback books are divided up into different sizes. So depending on whatever size book cover that you're working on, you can just come in here to the folder that will show all the sizes or all the different mockups for those dimensions. So in this example, we're working with a six by nine book. So I'll click on the six by nine folder and now it's displaying all the mockups for the six by nine covers. Look at that. So we have some pointing to the right, some pointing to the left. We have stacked books here. And so let's pick one out here for this project. Um, this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click and choose to open that into Photoshop. Great, I'm gonna go back over to my template and I'm gonna go up here to select and then over here to edit, copy. And then back over on the mockup, I'm gonna double click on the cover layer and then choose paste, close it, save, and the cover's been applied to the mockup. Uh, I've got other different uh, controls for this mockup, like the shine. I can control, you know, give it a little bit more pizzazz or add a little bit more glare to it. Uh, I can control the shadow of this. So if I wanted to darken the shadow a little bit, I can do that, or I can lessen the shadow, or just completely turn off the shadow. I can remove the background from these mockups if I wanted to change the background color, or I could save this mockup and place it on my website and make sure that the book will fit over the color background on my website. I can adjust the look and feel of these 3D covers in just seconds. And you know, I, I can't really say that with any other software that's out there right now, or there's really not a lot of software that gives you all of these possibilities in just a few clicks. And with all the different cover sizes and spine sizes that are available, you know, you always have a mock-up that's going to fit your projects. So let's jump over to another one here. Uh, let's go back to the templates and I'll scroll down here and let's pick out something else. How about this uh, podcasting template here? I'll go ahead and open that up into Photoshop. Now this looks like this is a five by eight cover here. So we're gonna go into the browser and then what I'll do is click inside of the five by eight folder underneath the paperback section and I can browse through here and choose a paperback. Uh, let's see, I like this one right here. I'll go ahead and right click and open that up into Photoshop. Great, and then I'll go back over on the template and just to let you guys know, it's so easy to edit and modify these templates to fit your own products. I could just click the type tool in the toolbar, click directly right on the template. I'm gonna get a blinking cursor here and I can select the text. I can put any text in here that I want. Uh, I can put software or you know launching your website or something like that. It's so easy, I can just confirm that. I can click on some other text and just edit the text directly on the template. I don't have to get into something that's very complicated in Photoshop or anything like that. Basically, if you can copy and paste, you can use Cover Action Pro. It's very, very straightforward. I can change the color of different elements and different objects on the templates. I can just right click on them and go over here on this layer and there's a color overlay on this badge here. I'll just go ahead and double click on that color overlay and I get this little layer style window. I'll click on the color box and I'll just change the color by selecting a color from the spectrum here. And when I like it, I'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK once more and it's done. And also I'm including all the tutorials when you become a member of Cover Action Pro. 
Uh, you get access to the training area, and I really show you and how it's been totally simplified to create and modify these templates and create your own product shots in just minutes. All right, so let me, I'll go ahead and undo that. And what we're gonna do here is apply this cover to our new mockup, which is over here. So I'll come up here to select, select all, edit, copy, and let's go over to the mockup, and then I'll just double click on the cover layer, paste, save, and it's applied to the mockup, it's that fast. And I've got this shine layer over here that I can adjust just to give it a little bit more glow if I want to. And so that looks really good. And now I'm ready to place it on my website. If you are coming from a previous version of Cover Action Pro, uh, you know, the 3D quality and the detail has been totally enhanced and improved. You can see the before and after here from Cover Action Pro 2.0. When you switch to 3.0, it just really gets so much better. And we've got the multiple different spine sizes for each of the books that are included with the set. Uh, the attention to detail with the hardcover books have been improved. You can see all the multiple different sizes that are here. Uh, books that are in different angles pointing to the left and the right. Uh, landscape books. Uh, we've covered all the most commonly used sizes in the industry today. You're going to find a mock-up that's going to fit your cover perfect. Uh, we've got paperback books here, stacked paperback books. We have books in A4 European sizes. The magazines look absolutely beautiful. Uh, we've added extra shine to the magazines so they really stand out on your websites. Uh, we've got landscape books. If you're creating books, you know, if you have larger format covers for children's books, uh, photography books, or instruction booklets, they're all right here. And we've also included these in A5 and A4 European sizes as well. Um, so we've got binders and notebooks, and these have really taken advantage of the 3D technology that was used when creating Cover Action Pro. Uh, these come in multiple different angles. We have all the common sizes, eight and a half by 11. You're gonna see notebooks with multiple different color spines, so you can match the spines with your, with your covers of your notebooks. Uh, the website displays and devices, I'm totally blown away on the quality and how this came out. I've really seen nothing else out there like this. Uh, but this is a great way to uh, present your your web applications and your websites to your clients or your prospects, or maybe you're creating a study course and increase that value in their eyes. Uh, we've got box sets here that are really popular for indie authors when they submit their box sets to Amazon. Uh, these come in multiple different angles and different styles. Uh, there's just lots of highlights and different things to really make them shine and glow on multiple different backgrounds, uh, products and study courses. Uh, this is for those big high ticket items you can create with Cover Action Pro. Uh, this is one of the largest sections of Cover Action Pro and there's just so many different product shots and different elements when you're creating your home study courses and or maybe you've just you've been thinking about creating a home study course, but you haven't quite jumped on it yet. Well, now you can get inspiration. You can you can browse through here and get ideas on what your course could look like and how it will look on your website. So you can increase and create that tangible value in your prospects' eyes. And uh, so there's just so many things you can do with this. We have media players for membership websites for displaying uh, modules and different things like that. So different angles, we've included a much higher variety in this new version of Cover Action Pro. Uh, the software boxes have been greatly enhanced. If you are creating bundles of software, or if you're just creating a simple web app or something like that, uh, these new product shots are just stunning. Uh, we've got open box uh, covers here. Uh, they're pointing to the left and the right. We've got multiple box sets and different shots. Uh, and the 50 pre-made cover templates that are included, which are completely editable. 
Um, there's also Create Space templates that are included. If you are a publisher of Create Space, uh, we've also included uh, the front and back covers of the books and also the spines of these books. And these are built on top of the Create Space templates. So <laughs> there's just so much here and there are no license restrictions. Uh, you can make these 3D covers. You can profit from the 3D covers if you want to. You can make money creating book covers for other people. There's no watermarks on these images. Uh, there's no monthly fees. Uh, you can download them and have them right on your computer. Uh, you know, you can create an unlimited amount of 3D product shots anytime you want. So I look forward to seeing you on the inside when Cover Action Pro is released, I really think you are going to love it. So you guys make it a great day and take care.